You all know what time it is. Fishtails time. <laughs> okay, it's fishtails time. More specifically, it's shrimp time. More specifically, it's shrimp cocktail time. Hello, welcome to Home Movies. Today is shrimp cocktail day, which I could not be more thrilled about. I never thought I'd see the day where I would get to make shrimp cocktail on a video for all of you, mostly for me, because I get to eat shrimp cocktail at the end of this. It is hands down top five favorite foods. You may have heard me say that before. I hope I haven't said that more than five times. Roll the tapes. I truly mean it. If it is on a menu, I'm ordering it. If I'm having a party, I'm making it. If I'm not at a restaurant and I'm not having a party, I'm thinking about it. I love shrimp cocktail. It's the perfect snack and pretty much the only time I'll ever use ketchup. So if you're a ketchup fan, this one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make some shrimp cocktail magic. I like to poach my shrimp in what is properly known as a court bouillon, which is a seasoned water. I think court bouillon also traditionally has white wine, which I'm not gonna use. And that can have like celery, thyme, garlic, lemon, but it's something that, you know, you can poach a vegetable or a fish typically in. And really what we're doing is we're creating a bath for which to poach our shrimp. I've done this recently with just salt water and it's excellent. You don't need to go this extra mile, but if you have extra lemons lying around, which I hope you do, um, perhaps like, you know, a random garlic on its way out, and maybe an onion that could get used up. Um, celery, fennel bulb also would be really nice in this, but effectively what I'm doing is I'm throwing these ingredients into this pot of simmering water. If you wanted like a spicy shrimp cocktail, you could throw some chili flakes in there, some peppercorns would be nice. Release the peppercorns. Bay leaf is a pretty common situation. And I'm just gonna let that boil for like two to five minutes while I do everything else. So right now I'm gonna talk about something important. I'm gonna talk about the size of the shrimp. To me, large shrimp is ideal for shrimp cocktail. This is the perfect size for dipping and eating, maybe in two bites. Anything smaller looks kind of sad and anything larger is, dare I say, too large for this purpose. And that's my personal preference. You might find yourself feeling otherwise, but I think that the large shrimp is like the perfect size. While that simmers, I'm gonna talk about the second most important thing, and that is deveining. People feel really passionately about this. And I get it, there's a lot of questions. Do we devein? When do you devein? How do you devein? I recently came to terms with the fact that I would rather not devein, option A, or I like to devein after they're cooked. And the reason being is because I do not like having to peel the raw shrimp and then going in with the knife, touching the raw shrimp, and then when they poach, they curl up and they get that like splayed sort of shrimp texture thing going on. I like my shrimp to be whole and intact. So I find the best way to do that is to devein them after they're poached. You might disagree with me and that's okay. You can do it the other way. You can absolutely devein them now. Roll footage of me deveining shrimp from shrimp scamp, shrimp scampi. Shrimp, shrimp, shrimp scampi. You basically take a sharp knife and you make a little incision and you pull it out. Gross, right? This episode of Home Movies is brought to you by Leah and Perrin's, the original Worcestershire sauce, which to be honest is an absolute dream. You may know this about me, but I am a huge anchovy fan and guess what Leah and Perrin's is made of? Anchovies. I use it in my shrimp cocktail sauce. I have for years, but I also use it as like a way to inject seasoning and flavor where I don't necessarily want saltiness or I don't want to open up a tin of anchovies. Seasoning things like beans, stews. I even put it in salad actually. It's a key ingredient in Caesar dressing. I mean, I could literally go on. Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce is, <laughs> well, A Worcestershire is still tough to say, even if you've been saying it for years, for years. <laughs> Uh, my first word was Worcestershire sauce, actually. Yeah, it could have been my first word because did you know that Lee and Perrin's has been made using the same formula for 184 years? I'm not that old. It just rolls off the tongue. Worcestershire. Obviously, I love an accessible ingredient and luckily you can find Lee and Perrin's in pretty much any grocery store. So pick a bottle up, use it to season all of your most festive holiday dishes this year. These shrimp are gonna poach for 90 seconds to two minutes. And I'm gonna just, because this is two pounds, I'm gonna dump them all in here. They do not have to, did I season this water with salt? 
No, oh, that has no salt in it. Thank you. Shout out Jacob some kosher salt, another really great kosher salt that is produced domestically. If you'll also notice, this doesn't, it's not like full of water. I'd say this pot is about half full, not half empty. Instead of shocking them in an ice bath, which some people like to do, I'm just gonna cool them on a sheet pan. So much like you pull a, you know, pasta al dente, I'm gonna pull the shrimp just as they're cooked and you'll see that they start to turn pink almost immediately, which is a sign that they're cooking. They go from gray to pink. If you were going for a different vibe, this would be, I mean, I guess that's more like shrimp boil, crab boil, adding like Old Bay or something like that. I know some people that love their shrimp cocktail with Old Bay. All right, I'm gonna sacrifice this one shrimp just to kind of test it. You can see that it's still pretty uh, translucent in the center, which means it isn't quite cooked yet. We'll give it another like 30 seconds. You don't wanna overcook the shrimp. And also know that once this shrimp comes out, because we're not putting it in an ice bath to stop the cooking, even on the sheet pan, while well, it'll cool faster because it'll be a nice even layer, and we'll continue cooking a little bit off the heat, so. So I'm gonna let this uh, cool down a little bit and then I'll demain them. And we'll show you that later. And then we're gonna move on to our cocktail sauce, which you can't have shrimp cocktail without a cocktail sauce. The bulk of your cocktail sauce is gonna be made with ketchup. I like to use Heinz, it is a classic for a reason. And then as for like baseline seasoning, I like to use Worcestershire sauce, which is I think also in the classic cocktail sauce. I like Leanne Perrin's. It is made with anchovies and vinegar and it is absolutely delicious. This sauce is what's gonna give it like a meaty sort of complexity rather than just sweet and tangy. It's salty, it has like a really intense depth of flavor, using it almost like a bouillon -y element. So like concentrated, salty, anchovy e flavor. And then lots and lots of lemon juice. I love lemons, I love lemon juice. You're gonna squirt lemons on the shrimp itself. You're gonna season your cocktail sauce with the lemon juice. Shrimp and lemons are best of friends and shrimp cocktail is, I would say, the start of that beautiful friendship. From there, you can kind of go in a lot of different directions. You can do classic with horseradish, either freshly grated or in a jar, which typically is just seasoned with white distilled vinegar and salt, which I love and sort of whatever else I season it with, I always really enjoy adding a bit of horseradish because horseradish also gives your cocktail sauce really nice texture and it gives you a sort of gentle heat without being super spicy. So I like these four things to kind of start out, but from there you can kind of use any hot sauce that you love. These are just a sampling of the ones that I have in my fridge at all times. We have like a, you know, vinegar-based sort of spicy roasted sauce. We have Cholula, we have El Yucatan, red yuzu kosho. We have this beautiful chili paste that comes from my friend Char from Krung, which is lasted me longer than I thought it would. It is fantastic. Queen Majesty Scotch Bonnet, and then Indian Lime Pickle, which is like also really nice and viscous and has a lot more flavor than any of these and a lot more acidity. Very, very unique and a delightful accompaniment to shrimp cocktail sauce. So I'm gonna start with ketchup. Um, and this is sort of just like a scalable cocktail sauce. I'll start with about, I always make more than I think I need. I think I still have some from two weeks ago in my fridge because I made way too much. But, but imagine, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but imagine running out of cocktail sauce, how embarrassing. And then I'm gonna add, let's call it two tablespoons of Leah and Perrin's. In terms of the Worcestershire sauce and the lemon juice and any hot sauce you're using, you can always add more, but you can't really add less. So I always recommend starting, you know, slow and then going from there. You also wanna be mindful of adding too much lemon juice or too much Worcestershire because you don't want a super thin cocktail sauce. Other things you can do to your cocktail sauce, you can add freshly grated garlic. For me, you can dip your shrimp in a lot of things. Stray too far from like the spicy ketchup, like spicy tangy acidic ketchup, and you're, it's not really cocktail sauce anymore, which is fine, it's still great. But for me, like shrimp cocktail is made with cocktail sauce. Your cocktail sauce should also be seasoned with salt and pepper. Let's call it three to four tablespoons of horseradish. This is prepared horseradish. Fresh horseradish isn't actually as spicy as prepared. So if you're using fresh grated horseradish root, 
You can add a little bit more. I'm adding more Worcestershire because it's reading a little sweet and maybe a little too acidic, and this is gonna kind of help round out those flavors and make it a little bit more earthy, a little bit meatier. I'm gonna add this to the paste, which is very spicy, but very delicious, so I only need a little bit here. This is a Cambodian fermented chili paste. It's got chilies and fish sauce and vinegar, I believe. Or maybe actual, she ferments it maybe with actual anchovies. I think when, I mean, I'm noticing that I like my cocktail sauce to have that like fishiness to it. So if you didn't have this particular chili paste, which I'm assuming you don't, uh, using things like fish sauce to season your cocktail sauce even further, even though this contains anchovies, is probably a really good idea. So the first part of Peeling and debating the shrimp after the fact is the peeling. And because this is shrimp cocktail, we're gonna leave the tail on. So I like to just take start by peeling the legs like that. And then the little jacket comes off really easily and it kind of naturally will separate where the tail is. So you don't have to work too hard to keep it attached. But this task to me is extremely meditative and I really enjoy it. Again, it's also kind of like a game where I see how much of the shell I can peel off in one go. It feels fun to me. Someone dressed up as Alice in Roman Shrimp Scampi for Halloween, which I thought was really sweet. Thank you, whoever you are. I see you. I'm gonna debate the shrimp. Again, you do not have to do this. This is something that if, if you are creeped out by the shrimp of it all, of the like veins, the digestive tract, if you will, all you're gonna do this is like a two-part process if you like. This is gonna be in, as involved or not involved as you like. But similarly, if they were raw, you're just gonna make that incision there. And if there's a piece of something in there, you just scrape it out. And then if there's residual business in there, a thing that I like to do is I like to fill a bowl with some salt water and you just rinse the shrimp off. This is if you have like particularly squeamish guests, but I've never seen a cleaner shrimp in my entire life. All right, we can get someone to help me if we want to expedite this. Please welcome to the stage, David. I have had parties where all I've served is shrimp cocktail. And guess what? Those parties absolutely rule. You don't tell people to come hungry though. You say like light snacks. How many shrimp are we talking for a party like that? I think the most shrimp I've ever done for a party was six pounds of shrimp. And that was one year I did a ham party where it was like mostly just shrimp cocktail and ham. For that number of people I had, I should have probably just gotten pre-cooked shrimp. Like, I don't think anybody appreciated how good they were. But the other night, when it was just like 12 people, everyone was like, damn, this is the best shrimp cocktail I have ever had. Like, people genuinely appreciated how delicious and well-seasoned and perfectly cooked the shrimp were. It's like a certain je ne sais quoi. Like, you can't, when you taste these shrimp, you're not like, whoa, onion, peppercorn. Like, you, it's not, you know, maybe if you're a super taster, you are. But it, to me, it's like, it's going the distance of, of seasoning your food. David's washing his hands in there, so it's a good opportunity to tell you that the other day we were at lunch and somebody came up to me and they were like, excuse me, are you Alison Roman? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, we love home movies. And then they look at David and they're like, actually, we recognized you first. Are you David? And I was like, it was, I've never been happier. I thought it was the sweetest, most wonderful thing in the world. So if you see David on the street, please say hi. He loves to hear it. He wants to hear from you. How did David react in the moment? He felt shy, I think. We're done here. Our shrimp cocktail, we're poached, we're cooled, we're deveined, we're ready to eat. Our cocktail sauce is made. I'm so excited. I'm gonna get rid of all this gross stuff. Alrighty, it's time to eat our shrimp cocktail. The day has finally come. I am thrilled. I guess you can like treat the shrimp cocktail serving like one of two ways of like putting your sauce in the middle and like your shrimp around. What can I say? I love a theme plate. I love a theme shirt. I love theme earrings. I like making them look like little synchronized swimmers. Isn't it cute? $30 worth of shrimp and some condiments that you probably already have on hand. And if you don't, you should. And I don't know, this looks impressive as hell. You always want to provide a little dish for tails. You can style it however you want. You don't have to have a shrimp theme plate, but it is cute if you do. So good. Mm. Like a really good shrimp cocktail, there is nothing that compares. And I feel like part of the reason why people were so 
delighted. The other night when they had it, it was because I think most people expect there to be like the shrimp that you order from the place and it gives you like the thing and they've been like peeled and shelled like days before maybe and like a perfectly cooked shrimp dipped in like your own cocktail sauce is really special, I think. That's shrimp cocktail. I can't wait to eat this. I'm excited. This to me could be my whole meal. It might be tonight. Great for a party. It's also great for, if you don't really know what you feel like having for dinner, to be like, we're having shrimp cocktail tonight. It feels silly and fun. And I don't know, it might boost your spirits. I think that that doing it for like any occasion is, I don't know, it makes me, it makes me in a really good mood to, to eat it, to say it, to have it in my life. Shrimp cocktail, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Lee and Parents for sponsoring this episode. Jane told me that she saw a young woman wearing a fishtails bag as a purse. Mm. around the neighborhood. Whoever you are, we love you. We think that is brilliant. We think it's chic. And we want to see more of it. So don't throw those fishtails totes away. Fill it with stuff. Carry it as a purse.